Hey, hey, everybody. It's the Review Revolution. Back at you again. And today we're taking a look at the next... Actually, coming near the end of the DC Universe 75 Years of Superpowers Wave 13. Today we're taking a look at Cyclotron. Don't care about this character. <laughs> I don't know him. I don't follow him. I don't think I've ever actually read a series that he was really very prominent in, if at all. So, as far as I'm concerned, this was just a filler character. I mean, um, I know that uh, I know that he had a figure uh, back in the Superpowers line. I remember that because the whole gimmick he has, and yes, there is a gimmick, uh, was kind of recreated here, but that's the only place I really know him from. I don't know anything else about him. And so, should be a pretty short review, because I'm not going to talk about him. <laughs> Taking a look at the packaging, I must say, it's, you know, very typical packaging, nothing new there. So far, what I like best is the button that it comes with, with the kind of the uh, image overhead of the Superman, Batman, and Wonder Woman, and then the Justice League, the rest of the Justice League underneath, with three of them very prominently up front. I kind of like that picture. That's actually really cool. What I really would like to see, and especially with all the Teen Titans that were in this wave, if it had been this picture of the three lead characters up at the top, and then the Teen Titans on the bottom, kind of like the adults looking over the, the up-and-coming heroes. That would have been kind of cool. But still a very cool button. And so far, the most interesting thing in the pack. <laughs> I'm sorry, if you're a Cyclotron fan, I'm sorry. I don't mean to dump on your character, but I don't know him. I don't know him, and I'm not all that jazzed about him. Uh, his biography, Superman prov programmed Cyclotron with complete knowledge of strengths and weaknesses of every hero and villain. Superman hoped that Cyclotron would become the ultimate tactician, able to anticipate the moves of villains based on prior tendencies, and recognize heroes unfamiliar to League members. The android could disguise himself as human... Barely. <laughs> and although he had limited physical ability, he could rotate his torso and deliver a powerful twister punch. I think that was even the other gimmick that he had when he was in the little three-inch version. Um, first appearance, Superpowers number 1, 1986. Real name, Nun. Uh, occupation, computerized crime fighter. Base of operations, Justice League HQ. Uh, special abilities, comprehensive knowledge of heroes, every hero and villain's power. Ability to disguise himself as human. And Twister Punch. You know, it's something we're not even in, the, in, his, in his list of abilities is he very impressive. I mean, they repeated themselves, both in his special abilities and in his bio. That just to show you, he doesn't have a whole lot to be talked about. Not, there's not much to say on him when you've got to repeat yourself. But um, for the wave, basically with Cyclotron, Negative Man, Superboy, the Blue Beetle, Cheetah, Blue Devil, and Donna Troy, we now have all the parts to put together... Uh, Trigon, but we're going to go ahead and uh, and tackle one other figure after this. For now, let's go ahead and uh, pop Cyclotron out of the pack and have some fun. Be right back. Hi, everybody. Thanks for sticking around. You know, a lot of times, if there are some characters that I may not be particularly excited about, I may have a feeling they're going to be kind of boring, I'll get them open and... Wow, you know, the first thing I say out of my mouth is, was I wrong? This is really cool. Not so with Cyclotron. <laughs> no, no, honestly, he seems just as dry out of the pack as he was in. And I, <laughs> I don't mean to, again, I don't mean to dump on the character if you like him. If you like Cyclotron, that's cool, you know, but he's like, saltine dry to me. Because I don't know him. I don't know anything about him. And to be honest, I don't really care to. Because he, he just doesn't strike me as being very interesting. Now, that's not all on DC. I went, or on uh, Mattel. I went on, uh, I went out and I tried to look up, like, maybe a modern version of Cyclotron. You know, hoping that this was more a vintage uh, costume for him. No. Everything I find shows him in still this kind of outfit. So DC really, really, I mean, if he's big enough to have made it into the, uh, into the toy line, they, he needs an update on his look. He needs a severe, you know, character redesign, badly. I don't know who's, well, I don't know who's unwilling to tackle it, 
but somebody, you know, there's some potential here. Try, try and try and bring him into the 2000s. Turn, you know, bring him into the into the new century. Um, another problem that I have with him, another reason why I don't really care for this figure, um, is that despite the fact that he is a rather boring character to me, there are some things where I, when I look at it, I tend to think that. You know, they, they could have definitely spiffed him up. There are definitely areas where he could have been a lot better. Uh, most notably, when you look at his helmet, and first of all, the paint applications, the yellow paint applications up here at the top, seem excessively heavy. I, I don't know why, but for some reason, the yellow on the front of his helmet just seems excessively heavy on it, and it really does look kind of bad. But actually, it's the, it's the metallic green that's on the helmet. I like the metallic green on the helmet. It's like a, it's like the, it's like the kind of a, a metallic color they used on Nova, and on Beta Ray Bell's uh, uh, hammer. But it's actually like a green, and yet it's only on his helmet. You know, the rest of his body could have certainly benefited from that kind of metallic sheen color. Whether or not Toys R Us has a lock on the metallic versions of the characters. If they ever did a cyclotron, I think you could, you'd really be able to tell that a a metallic version of him would have been just so much better, so much nicer. Uh, the gold he has, interestingly, interestingly enough, seems to have like a golden color along his back. But at some point, if you look, you can kind of see a line right here where it looks as though the, the color they use switched from kind of a metallic yellow, to kind of a, I don't know, a much darker kind of color. It still has a sort of a metallic sheen on it, but more, more of a flat gold, more of a flat yellow. And it's it, you can see it on both sides. You can see there's this line on his side, where on the back it looks like there might have actually been more of a metallic shine on him, and then here it went to more of a matte color. If they had kept the metallic throughout, both the green and the yellow, it would have been so much better. I think it would have been a much more interesting character, at least aesthetically. Uh, everything else on him, it's very interesting. I mean, he has the original sculpts on the forearms and on the shins. You know, it's not just pieces that are kind of slid on top like they've done with some other figures. His belt is kind of a soft plastic that's just kind of put on there. But it looks like it's actually molded. Yeah, it looks like it's actually molded to the waist. Uh, on his articula articulation, his head is very loose, and you'll see why in a minute. But it does go left, right, not really up or down, more than just kind of a little wiggle that it has there. Elbow comes up, or shoulder comes up and out, a little tight, up and out, twist, twist the elbow, wrist. Crunch works great, legs come out, out, twist to the thigh, knee, and foot. Now, for anyone who's seen the reviews already on him, you probably know, or for anyone who remembers the Superpowers version of him, but Cyclotron does actually, in the DC Universe Classics version, conceal his robot persona as well, both on the chest, which is actually kind of neat. I like that, that uh, mechanical pattern on it. That's actually very cool. And on his face, which is actually very tough to get take, to take off the first time. Uh, <laughs> only problem I have with this is the fact that once you remove his face plate, once you remove this face piece, the head that's underneath is teeny, teeny, tiny. It's itty bitty small. And, you know, to make it more interesting, if you wanted to keep the face off, just to make it more interesting, you can't do it because the helmet looks so big. It's it, it's it's either make him look wrong because the helmet's too big, or just go with his kind of humanoid face and chest, which again I think is just saltine dry, just boring, boring, boring. Uh, he does come with the now required base for all the the uh, the figures or each wave. This is the. Continuing with the Superpowers logo, which I really, <clears throat> I really like that they uh, that they put that logo on there. That looks really really cool. 
uh, considering that he only comes with the base, and that I don't know the character and I'm not all that interested in him, I probably would have passed on him had he not come with the set. Had we not got Cyclotron in the set, I would not have bought him. He's not an important enough character to me. If you don't get him, don't be broken up. It's not like you're missing anything all that impressive. Um, again, I don't want to dump on the character for for being what he is, because as Cyclotron, he is a good character. Uh, I just don't really care enough about Cyclotron. <laughs> so, uh, so for the most part, good character. If you're a fan of him, pick him up. If you're not, don't worry about it. Uh, love it or hate it, you know, you may, you, you decide. Uh, for me, I consider it a pass. Uh, for everybody, I certainly thank you for watching. Rate, comment, subscribe, join the revolution. We'll see you soon. Bye bye.